to me Tells me that I'm never ever alone I'm learning how J.S.U.S. Came down to us and gave his best Without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go! When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there And welcome back to Miss Fix It, where broken things they get to fix it. You think? I've been working hard today. My hair was all crazy, and so I need one of these things that just keeps it right in there. And then if I need to store stuff in, I can just put it up in my hat. It works out great. Now today we're going to be talking about Moses, but I was also working. I'm going to talk and work at the same time, but I need a place to put my stuff. I mean, I get hungry, and I'm here working hard, and I just need something a place to put my stuff. So I was thinking I could make something, be like, round my neck and like. <laughs> Remember that baby Moses, he was born, and that Pharaoh guy, he wanted all those baby boys to die. Yikes! And so, um, there's this Israelite woman, and. She was trying to uh, protect her baby, and she put made a basket, kind of like this a little bit, with some tar and stuff, and she put him in the Nile River, where, with all the reeds, and hid him there, and then Pharaoh's daughter, she found him, and she took care of him. That was a great story. Uh, maybe I should have made that string a little long. Oh no, there that goes not. Maybe I'll go. I use this rope for a lot of things. I don't know why I tied it like like that. That was a little too long. I already said it was too long and then I forgot that I did that. I think this one needs a little help. Let's I just go undo this. We know that Moses was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter and grew up living in a palace with Pharaoh's family. But even though Moses lived with the Egyptians, he was still an Israelite. 
And at that time in Egypt, the Israelites worked for the Egyptians and they did not treat them very well. Now one day, Moses went out to watch his people work and Moses saw an Egyptian beating up an Israelite and it made Moses so mad. Now, so mad that A, cried about it, B, he yelled, or C, he killed the Egyptians. What do you think? Ding, ding, ding. Did you pick C? That's right. Moses killed the Egyptian. Moses hid the body and thought that he was good and that he got away with it. But the next day, Moses found out that other people had seen him. It's not a good day for Moses. Then Moses, what do you think he did? He A, went to Pharaoh and apologized and said, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. B, he pretended that it was just someone who looked like him and was like, oh no, that wasn't me. Or C, do you think he ran away to Midian? Ding, ding, ding. Moses ran right away. And when Pharaoh found out what Moses had done, he ordered that Moses be killed. But Moses got away. He went to the desert, Midian. So in the desert, Moses got a job and he was taking care of sheep. But nothing changed for the Israelites. They were still having to work hard and mistreated and work for the Egyptians. But then they began to call out to God for help. And God heard them and he cared about them. He had a great plan to rescue them and his plan included Moses. Now one day, Moses was out working, taking care of the sheep, and he stopped at the bottom of the mountain. And on the mountain, he saw something amazing. Are you ready? Something was on fire, but it wasn't burning up. Now what do you think? Do you think A, it was a bush, B, a rock, or C, a tree? Ding, ding, ding. It was a bush. The fire was not burning up the bush. Have you ever seen anything like that? I sure have not. I've seen some exciting things, but not like that. Moses went to see why the bush wasn't burning up. And God spoke to him. God said, don't come me any closer. And God told Moses to, what do you think? A, take his sandals off. That might be stinky in the desert. B, find a fire extinguisher and get that burn that bush out. Or C, roast marshmallows. Ding, ding, ding. God told Moses to take off his sandals because he was standing on very special ground, a special place. Then God told Moses that he wanted him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Now when Moses heard this, what do you think he said? A, I better get out of here. B, oh, that's cool. I can do that. Or C, who am I to bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Ding, ding, ding. Moses said, who am I to lead your people? And God told Moses that he would be with him. Moses asked, but what if the people don't believe me. It's not fun not somebody not believing you. Could hurt your feelings. What and sometimes even embarrassing a little bit. What if they want to know who you are? God said, I am who I am. God was reminding Moses that he really is the one true God who never changes. But it seemed like that was not enough for Moses. So he asked, what if the people don't believe me? So God told Moses to take his wooden staff, this is like a staff, and throw it on the ground. And God turned that staff, what do you think, into? A, a candy bar, kind of looks like a candy cane, a rabbit, or C, a snake. <laughs> I don't like snakes. Ding, ding. Moses staff this thing turned into a snake then God told Moses to grab the snake by the tail when he did it turned back into a wooden staff 
Next, God told Moses to put his hand in a cloak. I need a cloak here. I'm going to pretend this is my cloak. Okay, you ready? So he told him to put his hand in his cloak. And when he brought it back out, it was full of disease. And God said, do it again. And he went and put it back in. And he came back, his hand came back out. And it was all healthy again. Those were miracles God was showing Moses. Well, this feels cozy. But Moses still didn't think that people would believe him. So God told him to take some water from the Nile River and pour it on the ground. God told Moses that the water would turn into blood. I think everyone will pay attention to that, you'd think. Even after all this, Moses told God that he still didn't think he was the right person to lead God's people. It seems like a big job. I can understand why Moses was hesitant. Now Moses said that he wasn't a very good A, the answer, B, a speaker, or C, a singer. That was singer if you didn't catch that. Ding, ding, ding. Moses said he couldn't speak very well. Of course, God knew all about what Moses could and couldn't do. God made Moses. God told Moses he would send Moses' brother Aaron to help him. I'm getting hot now. I get hot real quick. I just gotta get that off. He said he would send Aaron to him to help him talk to the people. So all Moses had to do was tell Aaron what to say and Aaron would say it to the people. Kind of sounds a little more confusing than Moses just speaking it out, but that's okay. Finally, Moses was ready to obey God and follow him unconditionally even though he did not feel that he was good enough. So Moses took his wooden staff with him and he set out to Egypt with Aaron. I know I get nervous sometimes to speak as well. And there's things that I don't feel I do very well. So I understand why Moses was hesitant to step out of his comfort zone and do something he didn't feel he would be do a good job. And it was a very important rescue mission that would be hard, but I know for me that God made me just as I am. He knows me, and He knows you too. So there might be things that you feel like, I can't do a good job at that, but I need to do this. Or, well, I do have a gift in this area, and you can help out there. Each one of you are a treasure. Each one of you are uniquely made by God with gifts and he will help you even if it seems like a job that is just too hard or you don't think you can do it all things are possible with God and he is with you he says in the Bible that he will never leave you or forsake you now I just about I'm so glad that we got to talk about Moses today it's a pretty cool story and there's still even lots more about Moses so I got my snack tray here so I can look at I got some fuzzy peaches. This is oh so sugary. They're sour. So I got lots of things. I got crackers in here too. I got put my snacks. Oh look at this! If I want to clap for myself, it's like good job, we fix it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Stop this here here. Oh, that's pretty good. That's handy so I can be working away and doing my thing. And I got my snacks right here. I like this. This is pretty good. So thanks for coming and being with me today with Miss Fixin. Where broken things, they get to fixin'. Yo, thanks. Bye for now.